Land Sergeant Dunbar? Yes. Private Dixon? Yes. Private Rhymes? Yes, sir. Private Alley? Yes, sir. Sergeant Deegan? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon and a very warm greetings from the 1st Battalion Scots Guards here in the Upper Goreshk Valley. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Colonel uh, Rob Hampson and I'm in command of the Scots Guards Battle Group for the duration of Operation Herrick uh, 17. Uh, this is the first of a series of video diaries that we intend to send to you on a regular basis to accompany the more formal newsletters that we'll also send out monthly. Now, what we hope to do is to cover a, a, a little of what we've been doing and to provide an informal way of allowing the men and women of this battle group to tell their stories, uh, both to their families and also to our wider regimental family. It's my very great pleasure to tell you that the Scots Guards Battle Group has now successfully deployed to Afghanistan and taken over responsibility for what we uh, describe as Combined Force Burma in the Upper Goresh Valley. Uh, this movement has been no mean feat and our quartermaster team and the, uh, the movers have really worked hard to reorganise and then deliver well over 500 personnel and their kit, their weapons, their equipment and their vehicles uh, from Catrick and other parts of the United Kingdom here to Afghanistan. This also includes a reinforcement of some 35 uh, Territorial Army soldiers and some 50 specialist detachments uh, from all across the United Kingdom, all of whom are very welcome additions to the Scots Guards family. As you know, Left Flank were the first uh, company to deploy both in this battle group and across the new task force helmet, and they've had really early and enormous success in settling into their armoured roll, as you may well have seen on the VFBS news roll that we circulated a couple of weeks ago. Most of the battle group, however, deployed on or about the September the 11th, which is a poignant reminder that we are here in the interests of our homeland security as well as international security in order to make sure that Afghanistan is no longer available as a training base for terrorists. We've spent the last nine months, uh, even the last year, training for this moment, uh, using the, uh, the experience of ten, uh, ten years uh, of, of uh, deployed operations. Uh, and I'm, I'm absolutely confident we are both the best equipped and the best tra uh, trained uh, task force ever to deploy to Afghanistan. Our training has focused on the military skills necessary to succeed, but we've had a real focus on counter IED, uh, medical skills, and the skills uh, we know as force protection, which uh, uh, go towards making up uh, our own security. Having arrived in Camp Bastion, uh, the battle group then goes on uh, to uh, complete a, a really good uh, and thorough training package to put the final polish on our skills and drills. Our deployment uh, means that we are uh, now able to join the international effort to support and train the Afghan National Security Forces and to improve their security, and therefore in turn, our own here in the United Kingdom. Currently, the battle group has, uh, is settling into its new role in forward operating base Ulet, and we've conducted familiarisation patrols in order to ensure that we understand the detail of the area where we're going to be operating for the next six months. Uh, the accommodation here is pretty basic, um, but it is comfortable, and uh, we're making it better on a day-by-day on -day basis. Over the coming months, we're going to be working shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with our Afghan partners uh, with a particular focus setting up the Afghan National Security Forces so that they can take uh, responsibility for their own security and they are a long way towards already achieving that. As you may have heard, uh, military spokesmen commonly uh, refer to this process as transition, uh, transition to Afghan security responsibility and the trans speed of this transition is based uh, on what we as a task force find on the ground with the final goal being the end of our combat role at the end of 2014. And from what I've seen so far, uh, we're very much on task, uh, on track to achieve that. There's no doubt that the task ahead of us is going to be a, a challenging one. Afghanistan uh, presents a series of uh, really demanding operational challenges, and remaining flexible is going to be the key to our success. There are already some really clear signs that progress is being made towards creating a safer Afghanistan. The Afghanistan that we see today is very different to the one that we last experienced two and a half years ago. And my sense is that the battle group is very much set uh, for our part in delivering that more secure country. Uh, you should by now have received the first of the two newsletters uh, that incl includes an update from uh, each company. And as I mentioned at the beginning, you'll receive a second instalment of our uh, video diary in two weeks' time in which right flank and left flank are going to describe to us how they uh, live on uh, a day-to-day -day basis in their checkpoints and patrol bases. 
And finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all, the families of the regiment, for your unwavering support and all that you have done for us so far. We would not be nearly as well prepared as we are without the generous support you've shown to us throughout our nine months mission specific training. And for that, we are all exceptionally grateful. Our thoughts are clearly very much with you all. Uh, our very best wishes from the Upper Goreshik Valley.